tools. Um, it's, I mean, you can do whatever you want with it. There's the possibilities are endless. So we're just gonna, first of all, kind of uh, let you know where to download it from. There's this website, I'll post it on the, on the li I'll give you the link on, on the video. But this is the uh, website where you would download it. Uh, please be, uh, or just note that, that this is a Linux software, or it's originally written for Linux. It was ported to Windows. Um, so the bottom line is you may not get the most stable uh, form of a program in the Windows environment since it was based mostly for Linux. So I'm not sure these guys are, I don't think they're Windows haters, but anyway, regardless, uh, they did design their software to run off of Linux and that's um, where it's mainly designed for. So, you know, once you port it over, it'll work, but you may get some little glitches here and there. And um, I'm using Windows 7 64-bit right now uh, and it works. I have encountered a few issues. Um, with it sometimes it'll just stop working that sort of thing so sometimes I just go into my Linux uh, partition work on what I'm working export it and bring it into Windows now there are many possibilities there are many other ways to bring drums into your Pro Tools or any other tool or uh, um, software to make music but I kind of tend for some odd reason like this program quite a bit and I uh, like it because you can export each um, tom, snare, bass drum everything separate and make um, and then bring it into Pro Tools and then add your own effects to it. Um, but first of all, let's just kind of launch the program and look at it real quick. And uh, a couple of things I want to show you before we even get started. Uh, this is something I was working on. Um, and as you can see, um, it can get a little daunting at first, but nonetheless, um, this is what the actual program will look like. When you open up a new project, um, we can do that now it'll load like this and here you'll have your um, your your available drum sets or available sounds as you've noticed it says kick so there's your kick this is your stick snare and so on and so on and so on this is where you'll make your patterns and notice how you got your one um, one two three four you can extend this if you like however I don't recommend it uh, at this point unless you obviously know um, what you're doing but here you'll see that it's a little you can bring these down a little bit, you know, instead of having that many. So it, it kind of eases up a little bit. And just like any musician would probably be able to tell you, you know, you got your, your your tempo and your beats and so forth. Here's your beats per minute. You can change this if you're working on a song. We can make a little loop just to kind of uh, show you what I'm talking about. Um, and so right, right now I have a set to pattern. If I set it to pattern, it'll play whatever's active. If you change it to song, it'll change. It'll go across. And as you've noticed, um, you got these little um, uh, squares and you select them. And so right now I have pattern one and you can rename these if you like. You can change the name on that um, somehow. Um, don't remember where it is. Anyway, um, there is a way to change these names. I'll, I'll uh, show you later. But nonetheless, you select this and what it will do, it will... If you go to song, it'll play all these and then go back to the beginning. So let me bring these down so that it'll be less. We don't have to listen to all these. And so, for example, I set this little loop here and I've got my kick, my snare, kick again and so forth. You know, very, um, very common, common drum beat. So, oh, sorry. And so if you notice, it's playing the song. I can, however, change it to the pattern and it takes out the little arrow and now I'm only playing the pattern here. So it makes it very useful when you're trying to make um, your um, you know, drum beats and your, your, um, uh, your drum rolls and so forth, which you can do um, in this. And I'll show you one sample that I'll be working on on one of my songs that um, I've been putting out there uh, just for fun, basically. But here's my close hi hats, and uh, you can basically, you know, kind of add that old style. I guess if you want to say old style, but and so you also have a little mixer that we can bring on the the master. You also have a little mixer here where you can also modify the if you want to close that up, give it more volume, bring it down, so forth. 
Um, these for me, I don't really mess with, and I'll, the reason why I don't mess with them much is because when I bring them into Pro Tools, I, I'll adjust the levels there and so forth. And I'll show you a session that I'll be working on Pro Tools in the, the next video, but right now I just want to kind of get you familiar with it. A um, couple of things to kind of, you know, that way you know how to use, or at least have an idea of how to use uh, hydrogen. I don't get into the recording part. The, all that, I like I said, I bring it into Pro Tools, and that's where I mess with. Basically what I do is I set my patterns, I set my uh, loops and so forth. Um, in um in in hydrogen and then from there bring them into pro tools <coughs> and then basically do whatever i want to do with them there and i'll show you how to set up a drum room and so forth but it will be in the uh, in those, uh following videos um one thing to just kind of um um that's very important for me um i do this quite a bit and uh i use this as my tempo marker and the reason why i do that is because that allows me to set up my my um my session and uh, I'll start getting the ideas from there. So, for example, what I'll do is I'll I set this up as my, uh, my my pattern, my drum pattern, and this is like my tempo marker. So, if I play this one, this one, and this one, what it's going to do here is going to play. It's going to start here, play the first pattern, which is that one. Then it's going to jump over to this pattern. And so as you can see, we can go back and forth. So I'm going to have it in the song. And now check this out. So the idea is you can play with these and make different patterns and then mix them up and do pretty much whatever you like. Um, here on this side, one thing I want to show you is you have your sound library and you have your instruments. My sound li library is pretty extensive. Uh, these I've downloaded from the Internet. And you can do it within the same program. So what you do is you, you can go to tools, um, or instruments, I'm sorry, to instruments, add instrument. And um, that didn't work there. Hold on. I'm sorry, import library. I'm sorry. So here we've got our, um, when we go to... Um, Import, uh, instruments import library we'll have this uh, screen here and uh, it has us this by default all you do is uh, update the list and then go online and look for all these different kits that are available for you mine will say inst installed now like I said sometimes since this is mainly for Linux and I have it in Windows uh, you'll see some of these drums I already have them installed but for some odd reason it doesn't register them that they're here but as long as you see them here you'll know that they're they're there uh, all you do is use just for example, you want to try something with a uh, hip hop, you would just click on it, download and install, and then it comes up on your sound library. If you want to load an entire kit, for example, let's say that you like uh, this one, you just go to um, right click it, it says load, and you load it. it takes a bit, um, takes a couple of seconds, uh, and then basically your new sounds are on are available here. And same way, you just you know Im import whatever you want and play it. Um, so that what I did there, I changed the uh, the sound, so it's defaulting to a different uh, different uh, sound there. And um, as you can see, let me kind of raise the volume here. So I got a much nicer bass drum, and uh, these are just from the same kits that are there. So you know, you can experiment with it, play with it. And you'll see that um, it'll it'll be worth your time. Um, so those are the basics. Uh, you have your instruments here as well. You can uh, obviously you know change some parameters when it comes to your um, your uh, settings here. Typically, I don't really mess with them. Like I said, I'll export them into Pro Tools, and then from there, I will um, basically do uh, you know add some reverb, some effects, do change the uh, the EQ on it, and so forth. Now the reason why I'm um, recommending this program to you is because when you write your songs uh, and you record your songs, everything will be basically on beat. So let me just kind of show you one uh, file that I've been working on. Um, this is on projects that my daughter and I, we, we will uh, uh, play with and uh, kind of record some things here and there. And so let me just show you something real quick here and show you this. This is one song that my daughter and I worked on. 
as you can see it kind of uh, and really what we pulled out here brought into Pro Tools I actually added like 20 more seconds uh, with Pro Tools we, we just extended some of these um, uh, sessions around so that we could get some more um, basically some more uh, I guess uh, uh, patterns before we went into our pre-chorus because we kind of cut it short a little bit so let me just kind of show you real quick what we did in that song uh, just just for educational purposes All right, so basically that's one of the things that we did. And as you can see, when, when this little arrow was moving, you'll see that it'll basically go through these. So right here, it's playing this pattern. Once this finishes, it goes to this one. Once that finishes, it goes to that one. Once this one finishes, it goes back to this. So basically it's going to this one, this one. As you can see, the, there's minor changes. And then to this one, there's that change before it goes back to this one. So as it keeps this arrow keeps moving, you'll see that then it went to this one. And you want to notice that change there. Um, and then from this one, it went to this one. So there's minor changes. It depends what you want to want to um, hear. And then from this, uh, this one, it went back to this one and this one and so forth. So it, it goes in a sequential pattern. So it goes, this one just goes one direction. So whatever it's highlighted is what it'll play next. <coughs> it can get a little daunting sometimes, but, um, you know, it does pay off at the end. And... Um, so here you'll see that that uh, that pattern where it was kind of cut in half. We kept the same beat of 120, and so what we did is we modified, or we just kind of um, we didn't modify. We added, uh, we made these patterns by we cut them in half basically. Um, that's why you'll hear that uh, that pattern uh, that it goes into basically a half pattern, and you'll see that um, drum beat where it was cut in half. And then it'll go back to its um, to its normal uh, uh, beat, and um, so anyway, once we uh, get all this and uh, play with it for a while, um, on the next tutorial, I'll show you how to export the song, the, the all these export them into a separate file. And then in, a, in our uh, third tutorial or third um, review, basically, we'll show you how to bring it into Pro Tools and then add some reverb and basically do whatever you want in, in Pro Tools. Uh, and it, it can, doesn't have to be Pro Tools. It can be any other program uh, that's out there. Um, but I just happen to have Pro Tools and like Pro Tools quite a bit, so that's why I use Pro Tools. But nonetheless, you could use anything else. Um, so basically that's it. I mean that's kind of how to use Pro Tool, uh, how to use Hydrogen. Remember to always save your files and save uh, every three or four minutes, uh, just to kind of make sure that you keep everything um, saved. And the reason why I say three to four minutes, it doesn't have to be three or four minutes. I mean you, you can use your own, but I say three to four minutes because I'm, uh, since, like I said, I'm using Windows 60, Windows 7 64 bit, and so it causes an issue sometimes. So sometimes it'll freeze on me, so I have to be saving often before I lose some of my work. Um, reason why I have Linux, I don't use Linux quite a bit to do this because I find it easier just to kind of export, bring it into Pro Tools, and then I'm set. Uh, but, you know, like I said, this is used for Linux. I do have Linux. I can show you how to use Linux if you like, request it, and then from there we can take it off. But nonetheless, um, we can use this in just uh, uh, Linux or Windows, and I use it in Windows just to, because it, it's easier for me. So that's why I save every three to four minutes. But, you know, if you have a stable working unit and uh, it's not giving you any issues and you're using Windows XP or anything else and it works and you know more power to you you just use whatever you want anyway this is it uh, for this tutorial we will see you on the next tutorial and uh, and uh, then I'll show you how to use it in Pro Tools and hopefully you'll enjoy it thank you